Hey guys, welcome back to SB Blown Away. In last week's episode, we found out just how bad our chain locker had become over the past 50 years. And in true Blown Away fashion, we get stuck into fixing the problem. However, with our launch date fast approaching, we have to put the deck job on hold and get ready to splash. And once Blown Away is floating again, we get right back to work. We are Natalie and Ian. We are sailing our steel catch blown away around the world. Join us each week as we share our adventure with you. We have spent our winter in Leros Marina in the Aegean of Greece. And for the past month we've been in the boatyard doing maintenance. But the boat behind us is due to launch in a few days. As you can see, if we don't launch, neither does he. And we get charged extra for that. So the pressure's on to get the underwater jobs finished so that we can relaunch. Twenty-five newton meters. Tight's tight, too tight's broken. We're out of time. If it's not done now, it's not getting done. So like expectant parents, we stand with our hands on our hips eagerly awaiting some movement. Speaking of expectant parents, we'd like to say a big congratulations to our friends Melissa, Andy and Jack from Sailing Melody on the birth of their new son, baby Oliver. Okay, own up. Who put their car in the way? And I've had this boat for 22 years. And believe me, the butterflies in my stomach are the same now as they were back in 2001. If you enjoy watching our videos, please take the time to give us a thumbs up and to subscribe to the channel. It really does help us. And if you don't want to get those really annoying notifications, because I hate them as well, don't ring the bell. But you can still subscribe. We also love reading all of your comments and we do try to respond to all of them. Don't forget to share it with your friends if you've got any. Just kidding. Once Blown Away is back in the water, we check the bilge to make sure we have no water ingress. With the help from a couple of friends, John and Sue from Lady M and Yo from Indigo Blue, we return Blown Away to her Mediterranean mooring in the marina. And once Blown Away was safely secured in her marina berth, we get back to the deck repair. Remember these two pieces? We did these in a yard before we launched. This is the plinth for the windlass and this is the section of deck that is going in on top of the steel. These two pieces needed to be bonded in the deck before we can refit the windlass. And we're going to use a combination of West System Epoxy because we're not sponsored by Total Boat and glass matting. But we have to prepare the surface beforehand and it's going to take quite a bit of effort to get the levels correct before we can even fit the windlass pin because all of those gaps have got to go. So with the remainder of the Treadmaster removed from the foredeck, we set about bonding in the first piece of the jigsaw puzzle. And using the router I make a step so that when this is all bonded down, it will be a staggered seal on the foredeck. Well, we wake, hear the birds and see the sun. Side by side, our fears are done. All the good times just begun. Oh, we know what we have, let's hold on tight. Found what we're looking for in life Call us crazy 
crazy, but things are finally right. With you and I, the future is bright. The following morning, with the epoxy dry, we can inspect our work. It looks all right to me. And with the core section bonded back into the deck, we can now concentrate on laying up GRP fiberglass matting over the top of the piece that we cut out to blend it in to the original deck sections. We're adding more West System epoxy as we're still not sponsored by Total Boat. No, am I paranoid? Are we the only people that's not sponsored by Total Boat? And we will be adding some glass fibre matting to give it the strength. This is a heavy woven matting that we're using because it will give the fore deck lots of strength. Don't forget the windlass is going down on top of this so I don't want the deck to be crushed when we tighten down the bolts of the windlass. We start from the middle and then work our way to the edges expelling all the air and making sure there are no dry patches. After leaving the layer of epoxy to dry again overnight, this is the following morning. We're now sanding and cleaning up, ready to put down a finishing cloth. And don't you just love it when it starts blowing a gale while you're trying to cut thin fiberglass mat? Remember the step that I cut in with the router? So this last final coat of fibreglass has gone all the way over that step and will create a staggered seal so that we get no moisture penetration into the core. Now we're going to add some thickened epoxy fairy material to smooth out any ripples on the deck. Today's mission is to bond the windless plinth down to the deck. Uh, we built this up with epoxy and we formed the curvature of the deck. We now need to create a flat section here in the centre for the windlass to bolt down through the deck. And that is what we are doing today. A couple of ways to do that. We can build this layer up so that the centre section is flat. 
or I can take the plinth that we made in the boatyard and I can hollow out the center of it. Yes. And I also need to make sure that that is in the correct place by using the template for the windlass so that when we drill the holes, everything's in the right position because we currently have two holes that are the originals for the windlass, which I want to reuse. Um, it's a very tight space for that big windlass to fit. It's very close to the baby stay and it's very close to that bollard. It's close to the bollard to the point that when I fitted it, I actually lopped off an inch of um, the bollard to make the windlass fit. Here, Ian is using the router and a sander to get the curve into the bottom of the windlass plinth so it fits the deck. That's almost there. Okay. okay, so <clears throat> the two forward bolt holes pre existing, but the forward one's there. So it's that one and that one. I used this drill last time. That's why I bought it because it's got a reduced shank. Um, so 14, 14, those are the two mounting holes. Those are the holes for the um, hawsers. And then I can bolt the cable runs, and then the cables have to go to the edge of this because of where the electric motor sits. If I put it in the middle, if I drill a hole in the middle, and it, it won't, the cable won't come up. It has to go to the sides. I remember this from last time. Okay. Okay. So what I need to do is drill that hole, that hole, put two of the bolts down in there, so that this is then locked in position. Yeah. And then I can epoxy around here to then set this in epoxy because at the moment it's still just a little bit wobbly okay. but once it's set into epoxy it won't be Nat, have Total Boat been in contact with us yet? Here we're using a thickened epoxy paste to bond the plinth to the deck. Made by West System. We left two holes through the deck for the original windlass bolts. This is so that we can locate the windlass in exactly the same position. And these bolts are now going to retain this plinth in the correct position while the epoxy cures. Time to put Nat's toy drill away, get the big boys out. 
dies with the no, most tools. That wins. That's our core. Part of it anyway. Cool. And now, time to cut the steel. Thank you, Professor. You're welcome. We just drilled out our hole for our chain horses. And the problem that you can see, I'm not sure if you can see, there's actually a frame mm -hmm. very yeah. close to where the chain will be dropping. I think now. the weight of the chain will take it down. If not, then I'll have to um, cut a section of that out. We had That's to move the horses forwards because we're fitting the new horses so the other ones were just slightly further off and that was not a problem but that could cause us a problem uh look at it from directly above it's probably okay it's taken up about a third it takes up about a third forward so yeah i think it'd be all right i think it'd be okay we'll find out if not i'll have to go in there with the grinder and take that piece out okay so one horse a hole done one to go once all of the holes are cut, we seal the end grains of all of the wood with West System Epoxy. It's paint time! Here's our worker bee at, at work. Worker bee! And this is a two component epoxy primer in preparation for a top coat the following day. We didn't really feel the love on that hello. And we follow that up with a two component epoxy paint. Complete with sprinkles to make it nice and grippy. And before we go to the trouble of bolting this back down to the deck, we thought we'd give it a quick service. Can they put the drain plug in the bottom, right? Yeah. It'd be so much easier. Smile to the viewers. It's a, it's a bit extreme. Have you asked the viewers when they last changed their window soil? I'm going to go with never. No one does salty this. Salty lass does. Yeah. Good point actually. Fair play to Salty Lass. Yes, they do because we spoke to them. They do change their windows oil. And fair play to uh, Law Friends as well who emailed me with the correct quantities and type of oil that is in this windlass. Hey. Windless installation day. Whoop whoop. All being well. So Ian bought a little plastic tube to act as a insulation barrier between the aluminium of the windlass and the stainless steel bolts um, unfortunately the internal diameter is perfect external diameter is a little bit large but they only need to be quite short so Ian's just adjusting the outside diameter of the tube with a dremel Okay, 
take the load off. Uh, next mission, I think, is to push the cables up through the holes. So the one with the tape on Blue tape. is on the right hand side. used a black rubber matting as an insulator to fit between the windlass plinth and the windlass itself to prevent corrosion. And it will also act as a seal but we are going to add Sikaflex into the mix to make sure that this thing does not leak into the steel plate ever again. Okay. Yeah, right, bring these both up. These have to go inside that stud. So they need to come through quite a long way and up inside of there. Okay. okay. So we need to connect the cables up, yeah. put the box back on, yeah. and put this back on then we can bolt it down if we do it in the wrong order we can't put the box back on so you can't bolt the windlass down until the box covers on there isn't room there's no fucking else going on and then i'll uh, get the remote out once i'm sure that there's no problem and uh, we'll just test which the, button do you mean for me to press then the one down the below isolator, the, the one on the power the power the for the windlass here. yeah on the box yeah. that's what it's turned off at that's all off the windows. Quick test, make sure it works before we bolt it back down. Tell me when you're ready. Okay, just flick it on. Off. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why we do a test before we put the cover back on. Uh, sponge. Still off? Okay, on. Um, can you grab my voltmeter please? I want to check the power voltage at this cable. I don't understand why it arced. Yeah, leave it powered up. I just don't like the idea of that box touching this little box. With Bertha back in position, we seal the base with Sikaflex to make sure there's no leaks. We also use a product called Duralac to prevent any dissimilar metal corrosion. And then we bolt the big girl back down. So in order to install the chain hawsers, we've already pre-drilled the holes as you can't drill them once the windlass is in position. Yeah, basically this is this one's slightly off. Not a lot, but I think I'm pretty confident I can cure it by um, levering it at the same time as I do it up. Processes. 
not touching, but it's close to touching. If I can make that gap a bit better, I will do. So, the almost finished article. Now, it's all got a bit dark in here because we've put down a protective black rubber matting um, just to try and protect some of the steel a little bit from the chain. So Ian is about to pass the bitter ends down and then we can reload the chain. Whoop whoop! This is the new 12 mil chain that we just bought this winter. Um, this side, and this is the old 50 meters on the port side. That's our secondary anchor chain. So the very final job which we've just done is to sicker that wooden ring frame back into position. Uh, just put sicker on it. You couldn't really see because it's so dark in here. Um, but there's just the two clamps holding that on. And we will wait till that dries and then we're all good. As with most blown away jobs, after two weeks of solid hard work on this repair, it looks exactly the same as it did before we started. Except for that shoddy, grippy white paint at the front. I hate it. It's got to go. Thank you. I can't even say thank you now. Give me that microphone. Okay. Thank you very much to our Kofi supporters. You really do make the difference. And thank you so much for a recent contribution from... Ian Bush of Sailing Rock and Roll and Tim Griffin. And thank you so much to our Patreons and our new Patreon. If you send us your picture, we will add it to the list. Tim Lothi. Brilliant. You got through it. Well done, man. Thanks. Thanks for watching.